is Spur Leadership Podcast number 15. I'm Mac Richard and I'm here with Mike Ward yet again for another installment of Leadership 101. Mike, how are you, sir? Happy New Year. I am good. How are you? I'm You're here all bundled up here. With it was cold this morning. A little chilly this morning. Yes, yeah. it was. Not necessarily Canada not, cold, but Not cold. Canada cold. I left my toque at home, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think for those who are at home, we need to explain what a toque yeah, is. Yeah. Well, I think what down here is called a beanie. Yeah, beanie. Yeah. Ski cap. I remember when I was in university in Virginia, uh, I think it was uh, those from North Carolina called it a toboggan. Oh, very nice. Which I found, you know, really confusing because <laughs> I think you ride on those. But yeah, the toque, the toque. I think any kind of cold weather terminology, you have to defer to Canada. <laughs> well, Y'all yeah. been doing it a lot longer and a lot harder than we That's have. That's why I live in the South. Yeah. You know, I think uh, as we launch into this new conversation about kind of where we are as the new year is like officially gone. I don't know if you're like this when you were in the business place if you were like this in the marketplace, but it's like January 1 hits, but it still takes, I think, everybody a few days, if not a week or two, to really get into gear and be like, okay, this is real, let's go. Yeah, I, I definitely, right? You got the holidays of the first being a holiday, usually goes into a weekend. People are still coming back from vacation, yeah. right? So to get up and get running, even though you had the ideas of you'd come out hot, potentially come out a little slower th- than expected, right? And Customers. I think too, I think even the college football playoff schedule <laughs> factors into that a little bit. Yeah. You know, when you've got a national championship game on a Monday night, even though it's now as deep as January thirteenth, but it's still you, that kind of keeps everybody in holiday mode a little bit, don't you think? I think if you live in the South, yeah, <laughs> especially, right? Uh, That's fair. For those those of us That's up fair. in Canada, hockey was still going all, all Christmas true. and is still going. So uh, f- for sure, I think it carries on, and it's probably the second half of January where people go back to maybe some of the plans, the visions, the ideas, the yeah. metrics that they started to set and go, all right, it's game time. Now, now it's time to start executing against those metrics. Exactly. And I think that's actually a great place to begin this conversation because – you know, as we talked about a little bit and how you set goals and how you plan for the coming year at the end of last year, I think now is when the rubber really meets the road and it's kind of like, okay, let's go, let's go do this. And like for us in the church place, in the church environment, you know, Christmas is one of our two Super Bowls of the yeah. year. You've got Christmas and Easter, and everybody is like full court press from before Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas Eve. And then you've also got the new year kicking off. And so everybody's kind of thinking about how are we launching a new season of ministry, new sermon series, new creative pieces, et cetera, et cetera. But it's kind of like, how do we actually pull that off and make it happen while you're still kind of in, at least in church world, I think you're in a little bit of recovery mode, yeah. just trying to get your feet underneath you. And so one of the things that I've I've spent a little bit of time doing over the last couple of weeks is taking a really, really hard look at how I'm investing my time day in and day out, but also week in and week out to make sure that I'm setting some some parameters and some guardrails to have some time quiet. Yeah. To to have some time, and this sounds crazy, but I I've, I've talked to a number of people who actually do it and they swear by this practice to set aside time to actually think strategically. No meetings, yep. no agenda per se, yeah. other than to just think on things. In Before I get into that exact point, I think some people may be listening and going, yeah, that sounds great. You've come off of your high into maybe a quieter time period, and not to say January's not busy in the church, but there's a maybe a little bit of a slowdown right, right up to right. Easter, where some people come into the new year where... Landing a client in January could be very critical to the numbers versus landing them in February and March. And so what I mean is you got full 12 months to earn income off of those clients versus right. you have 10, right. 9, 8, 7 months. So that, that cohort of hit the ground running landing could really make or break someone from a target or goal or financial perspective. So some people are probably sitting here going, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. But realistically, how do you do it? And I think you know, a great example, you and I have talked about this before, Jeff Weiner, right? The CEO of LinkedIn. I don't think too many people could compare their schedules and go, well, I, I'm busier than him, right? right Running that right. size of a company. And so he breaks down two or three hours in his day, every day, 
I think no one's allowed in the room unless there's someone to come in and brainstorm with them. It's a whiteboard, it's a marker, no phone calls, no emails, no cell phone, no nothing. And it's just yeah. blocked off to think, to strategize, to reflect, whatever he may do. He doesn't go into too much description of what he does during that time. But there's power in that. You bet. You there's bet. power in that. And I know I've been listening to podcasts leading up you know, to Christmas and through the, through the season and a lot during my running, I was training for, for a half marathon that I still... I was wondering how long it would take you to work that into the uh, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still very sore from, but listening to these podcasts, you know, it challenged me to go, how am I going to schedule my mm-hmm. day, right? And I know the alarm goes off at 4.55 and I hit, you know, quiet time, I hit the gym and I do stuff before the girls get up. Right. Right. Because if I don't do that, I can't fit it in. So yeah, I think yeah. to what you're saying is very important of structuring time allocation. And, you know, when you were saying, when you were kind of comparing and contrasting church world versus market world, et cetera, it's interesting because the reality is <clears throat> we don't use the term t- the same terminology, but January actually is for church. What we're talking about, I think. Is is building momentum. Yeah. Now you do it with by adding a new client, signing a new contract, whatever the case may be in the marketplace, whatever arena you happen to practice in. But for us in church world, you know, most of us see a spike Christmas. You know, people come back to church that are kind of on yeah. the fringe the rest of the year. And so we see an opportunity to maybe capture some of that spike and turn some of the spike into the the core of the church and to, and to convert some of that fringe into actual participants in the church people who don't just go to church but who actually choose to be the church yeah. for the rest of the year and so christmas is a, is obviously a spike no doubt about it but then we look at january mm-hmm. and and it really is an opportunity to hit the ground running and to and to to capitalize on that momentum that you see at christmas and turn it into real energy going forward for the church is not necessarily financial change for yeah. us like it is in the, it needs to be in the marketplace but it is people change it is momentum it is saying hey what we're doing is actually working and and we're we're working at making that not just a concept but making it a reality and so that's a similarity yeah. i would i would tell you i would suggest as a parallel and not necessarily a contrast to the marketplace because no matter what you do, I think when you're when you're passionate about what you do, when you're driven and you want you want to be successful, you want to be effective, you you're always looking for ways to grow. Hmm. You know, healthy healthy organizations, businesses, churches, teams, healthy grows yeah. when you're around people. And so we're we're always looking for those kind of things. And so, you know, to to every everybody that I run with in church world, Christmas is a big deal. Obviously, but then there's also the big deal of capitalizing on some of that momentum yeah. and and kind of turn and burn in January, even though it's not necessarily marketplace turn and burn. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I think that's a really good point. And, and to think about even say what was done at the church the last three or four months, you know, right? There was planning done in August. There was a big uh, series called Full Circle Faith that led up. So momentum was being built right into the high which hopefully carried over into January. And we're talking now about kind of circling back to some of those things as we go forward, because we said that whole series that you just referenced, we were talking about being a stronger church yeah. in six months than we were when we started that series, stronger in a year. How do yeah. we get there? How do we get better, healthier, yeah. stronger as, an, as a team, as a family of faith, and invite more people to be a part of that? Yeah. Well, and I think... The smart thing that we did, and, and I don't know if this was us truly planning it to be that, but we picked small windows, yeah. six months, where we want to be at the end of the year, how are we kicking off the new year? And I think for a lot of people, and I know I've been there, right? You you put together all these plans that sometimes take months. I mean, in a lot of people putting time and effort in, and you come out of the gate in the first few weeks or the first month is a little different than you expected. You hope sure. it's positive, but sometimes right, right. it's negative. And, and back to that point, all of a sudden, if it's negative, it starts to become harder to catch up. Right? Absolutely. It could be your personal goal. I want to lose five pounds in January, but 10 pounds in total by you right. know the summer. 
and you come out of January and you're only two pounds, that's a lot harder, those eight pounds between <laughs> now and summer. So the idea of putting the right plan together, that's realistic, but then coming out of the gate with the full discipline, and we've talked about this word before, and we talked about Jocko, right? Yep. In, in discipline to truly go and try to execute every day. And there will be slippage. There sure. will be shortage. There will be abundance above what you originally did. But to stay in the mindset and go, I'm not going to let it, you know, put negative thoughts in my mind. I'm not right. going to be discouraged. I'm still going to go for it. And that becomes somewhat challenging with January and, you know, no sticking doubt about to this. It. Reality always alters the plan. You know, yeah. Mike Tyson said so famously, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And, <laughs> and I've also heard, you know, military leaders in general say the enemy gets a vote. Yeah. So you can have a phenomenal battle plan. You can have an incredible game plan for 2020, but there will be variables. And I think if you're, if you're not built for variables yeah. personally or collectively as a team, that's, that's where you get into resilience, and, and you have to be able to do that. And so coming back around to what we were talking about just a second ago, when you talk about discipline, I'm really, I'm really working hard to discipline my day, to discipline my week. I'm not going to set aside two or three hours a day to think time, but I am going to set aside an entire morning every week yeah. to be quiet and, and to plan, but also to dream. I think to... To kind of step out and, and read something that has nothing to do hmm. with what you're working on in that week or in that yeah. day, but it's something so completely off the beaten path that your brain gets to take a different direction, that's where a lot of the magic happens. That's yeah. where a lot of times you start thinking in ways and in arenas different than your norm. That's where I think that's where God opens up your mind to new and creative ideas. And I think that's a lot of people say, I'm not creative. I wholeheartedly disagree. As, as my buddy Ed Young says, everybody is created in the image of God. Hmm. And the first thing we know about God is he creates. Yeah. And so you've got an opportunity to be creative as a parent. You yeah. know, and a lot of times our kids will tax our creativity. You know, <laughs> you have to come up with creative yeah. ways to inspire, to challenge, yeah. to discipline. But it's, it's having that time. And I think that may be the biggest challenge in the world that we live in it's funny. I think the 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 primary badge of honor or or the biggest currency that people really trade in is busyness. Yeah. It's almost like the busier I am, we 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 take this on. I think the busier I am, then the more valuable yeah. I am. And I think it's I'm going to group us together here and say it's a North American thing. Yeah. Right? And I'm sure there's other places around the world, but you know, 2 weeks of holidays on average, right? Most people go we need our employees to be working that hard. You know, eight-hour days, five days a week. I think it was Finland or Norway or Sweden. Someone in the end of 2019 has agreed to cut down to a four-day work week. And I think other countries have tried that before. Right. You know, I know in the UK and Australia, six weeks holidays is is very normal. And yeah. go and check out for two to four weeks on a single vacation. Right. Right? Yet we here, Canada, the U.S., I know believe it. that going – Coming home and sitting around the backyard with friends and going, oh, I'm slammed, is like, it's a positive. Yeah. Right? And that's actually, you know, almost a pat on the back and look how hard I'm working. And, yeah. And I'm going to tell you something, as you say that, because I've thought a lot about that, because I know, like you said, France and the UK and others have these long vacations that are just the norm. And I look at that and I go, that's really valuable. But then I also, as soon as that hits, I also go, yeah, but I'm an American, yeah. and and that's just that just feels like like do we really want to be? And I'm yeah. not going to name a name, but I mean, do we really want to be like that? But there is so much value in that time, and so to your point, I think a lot of people do. You know, maybe they listen to this conversation like, oh yeah, must be nice, easy yeah. for you to say you you control your time. Well, not as much as you might think. Yeah, and and it, it really is having the discipline and making the commitment yeah. to carve that time out. It may be after everybody goes to bed. It may be before everybody gets up in the morning. Whatever the case might be, that time alone and that that time to think and to dream, I think and and for the record, let me let me be very clear. I've only done it for 2 weeks now, okay? <laughs> 
but the val I've already yeah. I'm already seeing the value of it and I, and our and it's also kind of like taking a little mini vacation where because I've done that and I haven't answered the phone I haven't checked email I haven't had a meeting I haven't had a phone call that at at noon one o'clock on those days man I'm ready to like I'm yeah. I'm anxious I'm I'm at the gate ready to rock that moment as soon as it's go time so let me ask you do you think that structure those plans, those ideas from a work perspective. Is that where you started or do you did you start more on the personal side and figure out what's the right structure here to allow me to yeah. then think about the work side and, and put that into place? I, I started from the place of what do I need to do to do my job, to fulfill my responsibilities as the pastor of Lake Hills Church? What do I need to do to do it the best of, to the best of my ability, yeah. and so, you know, and there and there's a part of me that's kind of like, well, but you know, we expect our our staff to be at the church at eight thirty Monday morning. What if I'm not there? That's okay. I don't have the same job that everybody else has. Yeah. Everybody else doesn't have the same job that I have, and so, again, to that same kind of guilt thing about a long vacation, I've kind of got the same thing about taking time to not be on the phone or not be in the office, quote unquote. I'm still working. Yeah. I'm still creating. I'm dreaming. I'm planning. I'm laying out my week. I'm laying out, you know, where, who do I need to meet with and those kind of things S more strategically as opposed to, uh, as opposed, I'm trying to be more proactive than yeah. reactive. Yeah. And so it's, I'm, I'm trying to do that from a standpoint of, because I know what, at 53 years old, I know what my strengths and my weaknesses are by and large. And so I'm trying to play to my strengths more and and get as as good as I can possibly get where my strengths lie and and let my weaknesses just kind of mm. fade into the background a little bit. And so part of that for me is making sure that I've got my head up and I'm looking to the big yeah. picture for our church and for our staff and and even down to individual staff members. You know, how am I helping to develop them personally? And what are we doing yeah. as a staff to develop the folks that we have? But how are we going to get there? How are we going to make that happen versus just like, man, we need to do that. Yeah. And, and if, I don't, if I don't pull back and think about those things and plan them out, it's never going to happen. Yeah. Now, I asked the question because for me, I feel more comfortable with my work structure. Not to say that there isn't a lot that could be done if someone else was to come in and, and watch me through my day. I found that my personal life, I had to plan yeah. more accordingly. And so when Lauren and I sat down and we were talking about our vision and plans for 2020, you know, we set out Sunday nights and said, Sunday nights is our time. Yeah. Right. And, and we'll plan our week together and we'll make sure, you know, who's taking care of this or what kid needs to be where and so yeah. on. We also committed to, you know, the early morning rises, right? You know, that, that alarm goes off, you, you get going. Yep. Saturday and Sunday, not necessarily the same, but Monday through Friday, th that's how we need to do it. You know, Mason has to be up six fifteen on the bus seven. So you know, you, you got your time structure. So I, I do not envy those. You know, days. I remember you those, days those days so well. Um, and so I've had to think about it personally, right? Coming home from work and going, this is now family time, yeah. and putting the phone away. Which I'm sure when she's listening, she goes, "Yeah, he's okay at it, right." But I'm trying <laughs> at to least get, you have a goal. You're aiming at something. I'm trying to get better at it, and then the girls go to bed, and and then I can you know pick up and yep. and do work again or or not watch TV. You know and, what's really funny? Julie and I are empty nesters, and you know our kids have graduated college. Both actually, both are you know working on master's degrees. But this is an interesting dynamic. I was not prepared for. I'm as as I've said many times. I'm a huge fan of the empty nest. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a goal to be pursued with everything that you've got. But what we have found out too, I never thought that when Emily and Joseph left home, that we would be bored. I didn't think that mm. for a second. But what I have found is that it's actually more difficult for Julie and me to turn off work with no kids in the house because the kids' schedule. Yeah. Kind of created some artificial, very real, but art, but others imposed guardrails on our time. I had to quit studying for a sermon because Joseph had a basketball game or a mm. choir performance, or because Emily was doing this or doing that, and those were the things I wasn't going to miss. So Lake Hills Church had to take a back seat. Yeah. Now that they're out of the house, 
the only time that Julie and I turn it off is when we decide to turn it off. And, and part of the fun, and I think a lot of people experience this, but part of the fun of doing what we do as our, as our calling is you're never done. Yeah. There's always another phone call to make. There's always another hour I could spend preparing for a sermon. I'm never 100% ready to preach. Yeah. I could always do more reading. I could always you know, work on another phrasing or something else. And so... And that's not poor me. That's just the fact. You know, when when you deal with people and hundreds and hundreds of people, then then you you're never going to run out of work. Yeah. And and that's part of the beauty of this calling. And if you're called to it, it's great. If you're not, that's when you go crazy. But it, we've had to decide we're done. Yeah. You know, put the put the laptop down. Step away from the laptop, and let's watch a sitcom. Let's yeah. watch something on TV and just completely chill out and hang out together. I love to read. Julie loves to read, but that's something we do yeah. separately. TV is a way that we can kind of catch our breath, yeah. get into a show together, and then and then we're, we're actually relaxing and, and resting together. I think one of the things that I heard over break, and, and I've heard this before, but you start to hear more and more people talk about it. You go, okay, maybe that's a practice that actually could be used in, in my day-to-day. And so, you know, Joel Marion and Dan run a podcast called Born to Impact. Yeah. And Joel, I think it was Joel that talked about he has on his email all the time that says, I look at my email, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. And I'll reply to you on those days. And he also, I believe it was him that talked about managing on response time to text messages or things, unless it was, you know, the wife or the right. kids or something. Yeah, really it's a good urgent. idea to answer your wife before Tuesday and Thursday. But managing people's expectations. And so for our listeners to think, again, they're going, okay, this sounds you know, nice, but how do you actually implement it? It's, it's the little changes to manage people's expectations. You know, it's... If you're always responding to a text message very quickly, people would expect that you're always going to respond that yeah. way. But if it's not an urgent text and you wait a number of hours or even 24 hours and go back and make sure that you do respond, right, right. but you change their expectations, you now can control more of your time because I think for a lot of people, they put it on themselves. Yep. It's not that someone's asked or expected that of them. They've come out of the gate making sure that they respond right away or that they respond in the middle of the night, some people, right? You know, that, that they, they act and they say, you know, I'm there, I'm doing it. It makes them, I guess, feel valuable. I know I did this a lot in my career. Right? Um, and so managing those expectations are actually within your control. Yeah, absolutely. And that gives absolutely. you so much time. The thing that I say, I have to say to myself is my phone works for me. I don't work for my phone. And... I think that's the thing that you've got to remember. And, and it's interesting, too, because every time your phone buzzes or beeps mm. or rings, you get a shot of dopamine. That is a yeah. scientific fact. And we become conditioned. We become addicted to that little hit of dopamine. Yeah. Boop, boop. And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like You have inherent value. You are inherently important. Yeah. But if other people affirm it, it feels better and it's more immediate. And so to be able to step back and go, I'm going to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I'm going to mm. put my phone to where I check my phone when I can check my phone. Yeah. I think, you know, like I said, I'm 53 years old. I can remember vividly growing up and not being able to reach my mom yeah. on the phone because she was at the grocery store or she was working yeah. on something. You're you're still gonna live. Yeah. You know when we when we do our our summer camps for high school and middle school kids, and we tell the parents we have a parents meeting and with the students we tell them leave your phones at home. Yeah. You would think that some people were telling them to leave their right leg at home. <laughs> Their the parents are like, but what if what what if, I'm like listen for this w- one week yeah. for five and a half days, no news is good news. Yeah. We have your number. If something happens, if you're if your child, you know, falls on the beach or falls in the mountains and we need to go to the emergency room, I promise you we'll call you. Yeah. But you do not need to check in with your child every three hours to make sure they're okay, to make sure they're having that's part of the fun of growing up is you you get away. And and it's it's by the way, it's healthier for you as a parent, it's healthier for them, all those kind of things. That's a whole different sermon series. But my point <laughs> is that the phone technology can be a help until it's not. Yeah. 
And it's it, and it always comes back to discipline. Yeah. It comes back to saying, being willing to say, <clears throat> I don't have to be on call twenty four seven, unless you're the president of the United States. You've got to be willing to take the phone call yeah. at three a.m. If your kids and your family are safe, or if if you're accounted for, the other thing that this does is it makes you more efficient. When you are on the clock, when you are available, you're more efficient because yeah. you've set aside that time. You have to cut out the the noise. You have to cut out the the things that distract yeah. you, right? And, you know, back to Joel and Dan when they were talking about this, they figured it cleared up about twenty five to thirty hours in their week. And think about that by putting structure. Now, their structure may be extreme for most of us. To go, I can't just reply to emails on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But some of their practices that they, the time mm. they wake up. The activities they do in the morning, they don't look at social media. Yeah. You know, those both, um, you know, Christ followers, they talked about getting right into the Word. You know, just their patterns. Yeah. <clears throat> besides the extreme Tuesdays and Thursday responses like Joel does, cleared up so many hours. And so I think that's you know, should be our challenge both to each other and, and to the listeners is just go, there is things in your control. And if you make the big plan, if you make all this big sweeping ideas, it's going to be harder to... To start and start to see the momentum, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, it, it could be just one thing that you try and try to get through ju- the rest of January, taking that box. How about this? I, this is something I think is absolutely doable. Is let's say that you kind of go Tuesday and Thursday is extreme. I'm mm-hmm. not going to do that. But what if? What if you devoted the last 30 minutes of your morning and your afternoon, or the first 30 minutes mm-hmm. after you're up and awake and you've had that quiet time, whatever it might be. Say, I'm going to answer and res- I'm going to manage incoming messages, whether it's text or email. I'm going to manage those incoming messages at these times every day. Interesting. Yeah. And you structure your day because your day is your day. You know, you, we've all got the same 24 hours. And obviously, we've got more um, responsibilities. And some people have different people they have to answer to for their time. I understand yeah. that. But you still get 24 hours. There's still, there is, I promise you, there is a way for you to structure your day to be more effective and more efficient. Yeah. And I think those incoming messages, we're so swamped with incoming information that if we will manage those things better, then you can handle the variables that you can't control. Yeah. Those things are going to happen. You know, the one thing you know is that the variables will happen. Yeah. Variables are constant. So, Set up your day to manage those things when they happen for that ability to catch your breath and have that time. And I think, you know, as you you kind of bring this conversation to a close, you kind of just go, this may be the most important thing I do all year yeah. is deciding what not to do. Yeah. You get those small wins. Every day. Every day in the discipline to do it. Yeah. Every day. Right, because how many times do you have to do something for it to become a habit, right? And Twenty-one days in a row, they yeah. say. So they say, and and even then, it's kind of like we've talked about this before. It's it it's ultimately it's managing your priorities, and no one has completely whipped that monster. No, you always it, you could set your priorities, and I think most people kind of have them or they know what they yeah. are, but to manage them. Day in and day out over a long period of time, that takes that takes regular commitment and discipline, and having the ability to step back and go, "How am I doing?" Yeah, and being honest with yourself and the people around you about how you're actually yeah. doing. No, I think that's some great stuff to kick off the year with. I think it's also good as we close to talk about what our year looks like a little bit for yeah. what you know our hope is as we get these podcasts up on the different platforms for people to listen to, and and what we're our goals are for for them to utilize this. Absolutely. Life. I think, you know, one of the things that we've talked a lot about is this as it relates to this podcast is, you know, we don't we haven't asked for a, a Patreon or, you know, for somebody to give or whatever. But if if this has made any kind of a difference in your life or you've picked up anything of any value, the one thing we would ask of you is share it with somebody. Yeah. Share this podcast, give them a link, go to the YouTube channel, whatever it might be, and just say, hey. This is something I think would help. Yeah. This is something that because that's ultimately what we're trying to do is is help as many people as we yeah. can do what they do better. And 
anything you can do to help us get the word out would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and I think it would be good just to know we have on the iTunes podcast and we have on other platforms from a podcast. So what you may listen to for podcasts, go check that out. Yeah. We're, we're most likely up there. We have these on video on YouTube as well. And so I think in 2019, we started to get this momentum going right. with Spur from a podcast perspective. And I think we had roughly over 800,000 people either watch a video yep. or listen to our podcast, which is a great you know, kickoff. For, it's an incredible for, start, yeah. Yeah, great start. So you know, these aren't just going to be Mac and I. Uh, we have guest speakers as well throughout the year. And so uh, check these out. They're going to be on a m- much more regular basis than they have been. Absolutely.